Tower damage is based on your base AD plus bonus AD or base AD plus bonus AP. Essentially, bonus AD or ability power. Whether you deal magic damage or physical damage depends on whether or not you have two times as much ability power as you do bonus AD. For example, if you have Frozen Mallet and Leandries, you have 30 bonus AD and 80 ability power. Since 80 AP is more than double Mallet's 30 AD, you will deal magical damage to towers on top of your base AD. As we can see here, we are dealing magic damage on top of base AD, and with 80 items, we deal physical damage. Here we can see what items work and do not work on towers. Lethality, Magic Pen, and Spellblade items all work on towers. Armor Pen, on-hit effects, including Teemo's E, and Critical Strike do not work on towers. This means that triple crit AD carries have a lot of wasted stats in terms of killing towers, but excel at Dragon and Baron killing where Critical Strike does work, as opposed to Lethality and Magic Pen not working on Baron or Dragon. For the Magic Pen test, I compare equal ability power with different items. The results show that Magic Pen does work on towers. War didn't change me. I changed war. For the Lethality and Armor Pen test, I compare equal AD with all the variations. The results for AD items show that only Lethality works on towers. This chart shows the damage to towers over 5 seconds. Comparing first item choices for Teemo, we can see a fully stacked Rage Blade is number 1, which is no surprise. What we should notice is that the top 4 items are all attack speed, which is the best stat for killing towers. At the very bottom, we have on-hit items and critical strike items, which are ironically typical sources of attack speed. Because attack speed is the best stat for killing towers, let's take a look at what the most cost-efficient sources are. We can see that upgrading boots to berserkers for 800 gold is extremely efficient, giving 35%, whereas a 2600 gold rapid fire cannon only gives 30%. This also means Teemo's passive is very strong at killing towers, and it's essential to learn to use it before engaging every tower. However, there is one item that completely blows everything else out of the water. Elixir of Sorcery is 400% more efficient than a fully stacked Rage Blade, and 800% more efficient than a Blade of the Rune King. This item would be wasted in an AD build because the ability power would add zero damage once you have built AD, such as Mallet and Blade of the Rune King. In this clip, we're going to see the standard Leandries and Nashers build with and without Elixir of Sorcery. Notice I did use stealth for attack speed, and the wave is huge with 10 range minions. It took 12 seconds to kill this tower. Now with Elixir of Sorcery, however the wave is smaller, only having 5 range minions, which is half as many as before, I also did not use stealth for attack speed. Despite all of this, with Elixir of Sorcery, I kill the tower 2 seconds faster. This time, I will use stealth, although now the wave is even smaller and has no melee minions. Because of the attack speed, we will kill this one even faster in 9 seconds. Unfortunately, Elixir Sorcery does not work against inhibitors. For research purposes, we're going to take a look at four build paths. A standard Nasher's build, a build focused on optimizing Elixir Sorcery, a build starting Rage Blade and going AD, and a build starting Rage Blade and going into AP. Alright, so starting, if we were to start Rage Blade, one thing to notice is that it converts the damage to AD because it has nowhere near double the amount of ability power relative to its AD. It's actually higher on the AD side. So what we notice is the AD items are at the top. So Pickaxe, Duskblade Yumus, Triforce, and then the Rap Cap and the Nashers and Lichbane are a little bit lower in efficiency. So the if you were to go Rage Blade, the most efficient is actually going AD. So let's let's do this. This one's going to be the AD path of the Nasher. So after, sorry, back to here. The most efficient is a serrated dirk. 
it's it's really efficient once you have a rage blade so we'll go serrated dirk and we'll convert that into a dusk blade so serrated dirk into dusk blade at this point upgrading berserker greaves is the most efficient so rage blade dusk blade berserkers at this point another serrated dirk and then we'll convert it into whatever we don't have so at this point the yumus so rage blade dusk blade berserkers yumus now triforce becomes the number one efficient item and then for the final item so once we have these five items uh we don't care about uh cost efficiency we want slot efficiency so the most gold we can fit into one slot so even though mana mune is really cost efficient even at zero stacks it is only 2400 gold so it's better to fit a more expensive item into your final build so the best expensive item is a bloodthirster which would fit nicely into this ad build so this would be the highest possible damage you could do to a tower after rage blade going ad Here's a summary of the four builds. I think you're all thinking what I'm thinking. And it's true, the builds don't work simply because you need to be able to beat your laner to damage the tower. And these builds are the most efficient at killing towers, but not very good for winning a lane. I have tested them all on my smurfs, and they do work if you ever get to damage the tower. One game, I used the Rageblade AD path with the lethality and lost to a Fiora. When I was 0-3, I somehow managed to outplay her and kill her. I was able to take the tower in one push and actually ended up ahead in gold due to the tower first blood. So the point of these is to learn from them and find patterns. What we can see is attack speed boots are in every single build. They are the most gold efficient item for taking towers. Nashers is in three of the builds and Rageblade is in every single build. What we can take from this is, if we're winning lane and want to split push to take towers, there are four items which excel at taking towers, Elixir of Sorcery, Berserker Greaves, Nashers, and Rageblade. Now let's take a look at some common two item combos on Teemo and see which ones do best killing towers. We should immediately recognize Nashers taking up spots 1 and 3 and all the on hit mallet builds are dead last. It's no surprise because on hit items and crit do not work against towers and mallet is a defensive purchase. This doesn't mean that on hit builds are bad, it simply means they are bad at killing towers and should not be used when focusing on splitting for towers. With a mallet shift build for example you might be better off clearing your wave and grouping after you have your tier 1 tower down instead of trying to take a tier 2 tower. How about the misconception that AP champions do little damage to towers which is often used as an excuse by players who choose to die for pointless kills instead of attacking the tower. This is simply not true and should be considered a big misplay. While AD carries are usually the main source of tower damage in a team comp, it's not because their damage is higher, it's actually not because critical strike doesn't work on towers but because of their range and uptime on the tower. Champions like Lucian and Jace are said to have bad siege because they have low attack range, and Teemo has the same low 500 range as Lucian and Jace. Now that we know what kills towers, let's learn about these things we're trying to kill. There are 11 towers on the map. The first towers have the most health out of any tower. Towers start at 40 armor and magic resist and gain plus 2 every minute. The first tower gains stats from 1 to 16 minutes, the second tower from 16 to 31, and the inhibitor towers from 31 to 46 minutes. This means that if you engage the second tower before 16 minutes, it's actually significantly weaker sitting at its base 40 armor and MR. The only thing that makes towers riskier to kill as you progress is their damage, which ramps up as you progress. Turrets also have their own item inventory which you can see in game. The top lane towers have an item which give them a buff cutting all damage taken in half for the first 5 minutes. This was added to prevent lane swaps in professional play. Tower damage also ramps up over 3 shots dealing a maximum of 220% damage. This has the largest impact during early game tower dives often catching people off guard as the damage ramps up. So after working out the math on uh, tower killing, I started playing some games again and I decided to get my flex into uh, diamond as well and it worked out really well. So if we look at my match history, the last game of Sore Shoes was here, 
then I had two games of attack speed boots to get into my diamond promos and then one loss and then three wins and I think I won lane in all six of these games and I took the towers extremely fast with the attack speed boots and the elixir sorcery so I'll show some clips of that now because it worked extremely well so I ended up rushing attack speed boots against Mundo just because I backed with 1100 gold and I was up by so much so I got first blood tower off that I don't know I guess he thought he could all in me here because I was low and had no mana but yeah that, that kind of failed so as soon as I, I kill this Mundo right here I, I recall and I'm able to afford and complete my Nashers and I pick up the Elixir Sorcery and TP right on her tower to save the minion and need a couple tower shots and look how fast the tower dies. It drops before anyone can even react. Vlad is on his way from base but by the time he even gets halfway here the tower is gone. So now I have three people rotating, four Mundos coming too. So I'm just going to go back off and stealth in lane. I, I waited a bit and I ended up stealing red buff and then when I saw that team had pressure elsewhere I came back in and again by the time they come and react for this tower the tower is going to be gone that true damage is just eating it alive the elixir sorcery also makes you really strong in 1v1s you get a lot of stats for 500 gold and especially against tanks if that true damage proc it helps a lot so you can see here I don't know this mundo thinks he can fight me but I guess he hasn't learned his lesson yet so yeah I opened completely open the top lane up. Here I don't have the elixir of sorcery, we just have the two attack speed items and the stealth and you can see how fast that tower drops with that massive attack speed and, and the AP. So that was five shots. Elixir of sorcery gives a lot of ability power for 500 gold. So while, while you have that on, you are very strong. So it's really good when ahead for, for closing out games, I find. Especially if you get to attack the towers, like the Nashers and the Taxi Boots. So you can see it just dropping. This is the game we lost, actually. Um, I don't know, everyone, everyone else lost lane and... I destroyed this poppy, and I was just splitting and taking towers. We had a, they had a better team fight than we did, so I was trying to do what I could in the side lanes. We almost won this game, but it just, I don't know, so I think someone got caught, and that was it. So I messed up here, I tried to get the stealth off, and I, I went out too fast. Even then, look how fast the tower dies. So for this next inhibitor turret, I'll pull off the uh, perfect scenario of the taxi boots, nashers, and uh, elixir, and then I'll pull off the stealth on time as well, and have almost full up time. And I just destroy the tower really fast. I ended up having to back off. I couldn't get the inhibitor, but at least I opened up the bot lane. A couple of people came, and I had to back off. So the uh, conclusion of all of this is, if you're ahead, give attack speed and elixir a try. You end up taking towers really fast, you can take objectives really fast, and close out games better. So thanks for watching, and give it a try.